Hi friends, Zoe here. First of all, happy Friday. And second, thank you so much for all of your positive comments on my videos. It, it truly makes my day and I really appreciate you taking the time to write me some kind words. There was one comment in particular which sparked an idea for me and this idea is going to be a new series on my channel called Ask Zoe. If you guys have any questions for me, leave them down below. I had done an advice video previously on jealousy, so I'll link that one below too if you haven't seen it. But my YouTube friend Dana had asked me to create a video on how to get over being cheated on and how to heal and also how to not get into a relationship like that again. So yeah, let's get started. <laughs> So I was cheated on once in my life that I know of anyways. I'll tell you guys that story and then I'll tell you everything that I learned from that story and then we'll go from there. I was 18 at the time and I had recently broken up with my long-term like high school boyfriend. This was a break period we were on for like a year, a year and a half or something. And I started seeing this guy that I was working with at the time at a restaurant. We'll just call him John. I'll tell you why we'll call him John a little bit later, but we'll call him John. So John was quite a bit older than me. I was 18, like I said, and John was actually 25. If my parents are watching, um, yeah, I didn't tell you about this one. He definitely like was one of those guys that just kind of like swept you off your feet. I mean. He he was good looking, he dressed really nice, he had like a really nice car, really nice condo, and he was older and more mature, which I thought anyways. I'll tell you how it went down. So I was at his house one night and we were watching a movie and I went to the washroom and when I was washing my hands, I noticed in the sink there was a long black hair, which was I thought was kind of weird because he only had, he had one roommate, it was a guy and he was super studious so he never left his room or the library and you know I I remember thinking like hmm I wonder what what that is about but you know I just went out finished watching the movie went home I think like a week or two later it was actually my 19th birthday so I had barely heard from him the day of my birthday and I thought it was because I was having a big birthday dinner that night and I assumed maybe he's coming to surprise me at my dinner with like flowers or something because he had mentioned he was nervous about meeting all my friends and I assumed maybe he wanted to make a good first impression. Anyways, I'm at my birthday dinner and he's late. He wasn't really answering my texts and I was like, that's weird. And another mutual friend of ours was there. There are a couple, we'll call them. Chandler and Monica. So Chandler and Monica are sitting there and I'm like, oh, should we, should we wait for John like sh to order or should we just go? And then Chandler looks over at me and he's like, Zoe, I have to tell you something. This is in front of everybody at my birthday dinner, by the way, my 19th birthday dinner. And he's like, Zoe, John's been cheating on you. <laughs> I'm laughing now, but at the time I was not laughing. Immediately just, I, I can remember the feeling, just everything sunk inside of me and I was in disbelief. And he's like, John's been cheating on you with Jane, we'll call her Jane. Jane was a good friend of mine. Jane also worked with me and John. And so I excused myself from the dinner table, I went to the bathroom, pretty sure I like burst into tears or something, pulled myself together, then came back and was all, I don't care, we're gonna have a good night. I was pretty upset inside, but I, I toughed it out. Um, after dinner, we went to my house for pre-drink. It was really cute because a few of my guy friends who couldn't come out to dinner, I don't know how they got into my house, but they were in my house and they had rearranged my living room kitchen area and they were also dressed as presents, which was, which was really cute and really funny. We ended up having like a really great pre-drink at my house and then we went downtown to dance the night away, I guess, at some, some dive bar, <laughs> for sure a dive bar, the palace, if anyone's familiar. I had a great time with all of my friends, but then of course the next day I woke up slightly hungover and I'm pretty upset about the whole thing. I listened to Taylor Swift all day, Dear John specifically, because it was her Speak Now album and I was like, this song speaks to me. If you guys are familiar with that song, you know what I'm talking about. I believe the line is something like, <laughs> Dear John, 
Don't you think I was too young to be messed with? The girl in the dress cried the whole way home. I cried in the car, but I toughed it out. Back to my story. I was I was pretty upset that day. I'm pretty sure I probably changed my Facebook status to those Taylor Swift lyrics or something. Yeah, I guess that's kind of the end of the story. John tried to get me back a few times, but I really just cut him off. I truly believe that that's what you have to do when you when you need to get over some, somebody. You just gotta, you know, delete him off of Facebook, delete him out of your phone, out of sight, out of mind type of deal. I guess the things that I learned from my story are trust your intuition. Like I mentioned, the story when I was in the bathroom and I saw that long brown hair, a part of me was extremely curious. I'm not the type of person to jump to conclusions or be jealous, things like that, but I had a feeling and I I really think that you need to trust your intuition in situations like that. Not like you need to accuse somebody or like attack them, but if you're curious about something, don't beat around the bush, maybe just ask. So uh, looking back on that now, maybe I could have been like, uh, why is there a long black hair in your sink? And, or made a joke about it, like, oh, whose long black hair is this? Seconds. Like I mentioned, I had a really great time with my friends. I danced the night away, and I think that part of the story is just to live in the moment. Regardless of if you're going through something difficult, you need to just live in the moment and have fun and enjoy yourself. I'm so glad that I didn't go home, cry all night. I went out with my friends and I celebrated my 19th birthday. Because now I don't even know John. I don't even know where John lives in the world. So it really doesn't matter. But I remember my 19th birthday was super fun. And lastly, like I mentioned, I... I took action right away, deleting him off of Facebook. Whenever something bad happens in my life or something upsetting, I always give myself three days. So day one, you're allowed to be the biggest mess you want to be. You're allowed to eat a pint of Ben and Jerry's, watch P.S. I Love You like five times. And then day two is when you start to take action. Day two is making sure that they're deleted off of everything. Uh, hide reminders of them in your room, things like that. Just clear, clear the air. And don't text them, okay? Don't. Even if you want to text them to tell them how much you hate them or whatever, it's not even worth your time. You've spent too much time and energy on them already to even let them have any part of you. Day three, you need to make an action plan for yourself. So if they aren't already deleted off everything, you can delete them off of everything. And then your new action plan is taking steps like filling your social calendar up. You want to be too busy that you can't even think about this guy. You want to go out there and meet new people, get in those conversations and while you're out and about don't talk about him because that would just bring up the feelings it'll bring up the emotions and you just don't want to do that take a piece of paper and write down everything you want in a partner if you look at this list like I didn't hear let me pull it out I so for example my list says it's just it's supposed to describe the person that that you would like to be with Someone who loves me unconditionally, someone who motivates me and encourages me to be a better person. Someone who I can work with in life, work, mind, body, spirit. Someone who I can be an entrepreneur with and conquer the world with. Somebody who respects me and cares about me. Someone who is forever kind to me. Someone who will take care of me. Someone who would make dinner with me and drink a glass of wine with me. Someone who would talk about life with me and someone who makes me laugh. So I guess this is kind of like a list of requirements <laughs> for the next guy that comes into my life. But anyways, so make your list and I've also found it super helpful to make a list in my phone of all the reasons why I don't or would never be with the person who upset me or that I broke up with. The reason why I put this in my phone is because maybe at times you're tempted to text them. Like I said, or maybe you're sad and you miss them, you wanna text them, no. You could be angry and wanna text them, no. Just don't text them at all. Make a list in your phone of all the reasons why it will never work out between you two. And if ever you feel the slightest urge, if you're angry, just go look at your list and be like, ugh, this person is so not worth my time. So not worth my energy, so not even worth the movement of my thumbs to type the message, okay? One more point to make about if you're ever a feeling lonely. Feeling lonely occasionally is a lot better than feeling alone with somebody that you're unhappy with. I've definitely found myself at times feeling lonely and it, it led me to making bad choices in relationships. Whenever you go through something like this, you really just need to work on yourself. 
I think you probably have heard this advice before, but just work on yourself and be the best you you can be and the right person will just come into your life. And I truly believe that the universe puts people into your life for reasons. Like I mentioned, John was a terrible decision and I feel like after that the universe kind of presented me with prospects who were quite similar to him, but I was immediately able to spot the red flags. I just had this radar, but I feel the universe was testing me a little, was handing me these guys and they were they showed an interest in me, but I felt a little bit off with them, so I just no, no, no. And History will repeat itself until you learn your lesson. So try to think about back to when the relationship started or things that spiked your intuition or that were red flags to you because the more you can think about those red flags when you're meeting somebody else, don't brush them off because your intuition is a super powerful thing. Trust it. Anyways, Dana, I hope that this video helped you and I hope that this video helped anyone else watching it too. You guys should definitely share your stories below if you've been cheated on or if you have any other advice to share because I think that this could be the start of something great. We could really help each other here. We can be kind and make friends and give each other advice. So yeah, comment below. And whatever you're going through right now, there's a Taylor Swift song for that. Have a great day. Bye.